Okay, so um, I'm doing this video for people who um, have just gotten dreadlocks or who are thinking about dreadlocks. It just to kind of help you prep yourself, um, things that you should be thinking about socially within yourself, um, help you with your decision about whether you want dreadlocks or not. Um, a lot of my, I'm going to warn you, a lot of my stuff is going to be negative. Um, it's going to be like a lot of the bad aspects of dreadlocks, unfortunately, um, because I'm going to be talking about social issues. Um, but that's the whole point of this video is that if I can talk about all the bad things and I'll talk about some of the good things, um, and you still want them, then, um, you're on the right road. Like you have considered all of the consequences. Um, and you still want them, even in the face of adversity. So, awesome. So, first thing I want to talk about, unfortunately, um, and I would say pretty much every dreadhead has experienced this, is dread stereotypes. Um, and it sucks. It really does. Um, you'll get called hippie, dirty hippie, pothead, um, uh, hobo, um, a couple other names uh, that I won't mention. Uh, and so be prepared for that and figure out how you're going to respond. Um, whether you're going to educate people and say, actually, I'm not dirty, or if you're going to turn around and cuss them out. So my response is to educate them if they're willing to listen. Um, because the more people that I educate, the uh, the less people that will stereotype me, and hopefully the, the the less the more people they'll educate, and even less people will stereotype. So, um, food for thought. Um, the next thing is is um, having dreadlocks, um, especially in the public eye, is you're you're really obviously you're changing the way you look, but because of the associations that people have with dreadlocks. You're changing your image. Um, and for some people, it's in a positive way. And for some people, it's in a negative way. Regardless, um, it's uh, it's something, depending on your reasons, it's something very private about your personality that you're wearing permanently. This is not something that you can take on and take off. Like, oh, I don't, decide, I don't want to wear this today. I want to look professional today. I want to look clean cut or clean cut. Um, it's not something that you can just, like, you, there are ways to mask it, which I'll talk about, but um, if, you, if you need to, like if you're going to court or something, but um, this is something that's permanent, like it's, it's going to stick with you, um, unless you have like a really awesome wig or something like that. Um, anyway, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you're a very private person and you don't like people knowing a lot about you, then this is something that you're really going to have to think about because um, you're going to go to the grocery store or the mall or wherever and you're going to get looked at. Like, it's it, dreads are not normal. Um, and so if you like that kind of thing, cool. Um, if you don't, then you'll be paranoid all the time. And at first, I would say even now, like I still am, like I'll, I'll go out to the store and yeah, maybe it's just my paranoia. So anyway, keep that in mind. Um, changes your image. Um, I already talked about educating people. And the other thing is, is uh, because dreads are not normal, people are going to want to touch you. And I know that sounds dirty, but people will want to touch you. And uh, most, not most, some people will walk up to you and say, hi, it's nice to meet you. Um, I'm really curious. May I feel your hair? Um, and then you can respond however you feel like you need to respond. Um, and there are kids that will walk up to you and, and just be like, like pet you. Um, and I think kids are harmless. So as long as they don't have something in their hands, it's going to get in my hair. I'm cool with it. Um, but I kid you not, and you may think I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Um, there will be full grown adults that will walk up to you and touch you without asking. They'll just touch you and they Maybe they think that you can't feel it or something. I don't know. But they'll just touch you. And you have to figure out how you're going to respond, whether it's going to be like, you know, bitch, get your hands off me. Or um, uh, 
uh, you know, you know, please don't touch my hair. Okay, thanks. Um, or you may be someone that likes to be touched by strangers. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, keep that in mind. Next thing is uh, your personal life. So people that are important to you, um, you may want to tell them, hey, they may even help you kickstart your dreadlocks. So they may de you may definitely want to tell, tell them. Um, first thing about personal life is your family. Um, if, if this is especially important for people, people that are under 18, um, that you may want to talk to your folks and see if they're cool with it. Because if they're paying your finances, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on a whim without talking to them, but that's your call. So, um, things that you can say to them to kind of ease them into it, um, is, uh, I'll just tell you my story. Um, uh, the first thing that my mom asked me was, how long are you going to have them? And so I told her, you know, I don't know. I may have them forever. Um, and the next thing that she was worried about was that I was going to have to shave my head. And so I was like, I told her that I wouldn't have to. And if you don't know that, go research it. Because you don't have to shave your head or cut, or cut all your hair off in order to get rid of your dreads. You can just comb them out with a ton of conditioner, um, depending on how you started your dreads. Um... Anyway, so that helped her ease her into it and ease my dad into it. Um, also, you can tell them that you're not dirty, which helps quite a bit. Um, and so um, uh, tell them that you're not, you know, tell them that you're going to be taking a shower, you know, every couple of days. It's not like you don't have to wash your hair for several months. Um, so it, it tell them the myths and then tell them what the truth is. And normally... Um, people are much more willing to listen to you once you tell them that a lot of the myths are, well, myths. So, um, and then with your work, if you have a job that supports you having dreadlocks, badass, awesome. I have a job that is okay with me having dreadlocks, as long as I put them back and I make them look presentable. Um, and so... What I do is I put my hair back in a ponytail or a bun or whatever, or a headband or whatever, and um, I get really familiar, because I don't like to use hairspray or product or whatever, get really familiar with these amazing things, and also known as a bobby pin. Um, and I just go crazy with them, and I pin down all my bumps, and I can pass for normal hair. I'm at four and a half months, and I can pass for normal hair. Some days, some days not, but anyway. Um, so that's what I do. Um, other things that you can do is you can have a hat, um, anyway, uh, but if you're looking for a job, let's say you don't have a job, then um, you, if you decide to go ahead and start doing dreadlocks um, before you get a job, what you can do is, uh, I, because I did the natural neglect method, I had a window of opportunity where I didn't look like I had dreadlocks when I put them back. And so, if you want to do that, cool, you are going to run into issues in your job where eventually you're going to have to tell people or people are going to realize on their own that you have dreadlocks. So, depending on the environment that you work at, that may or may not be um, relevant. Um, let's see here. Okay, now, if you have a job or if you have a family that does not support you having dreadlocks, and there's really no feasible way for you to do it without a whole lot of stress and a whole lot of heartache for yourself, then maybe you ought to wait. Um, and it's not the end of the world. Um, all that means is that you'll have more time to think about it, more time to figure out how you want to do it. Um, you're still alive. Your hair is still growing. If anything, it just gives you time to grow your hair out longer. Because um, longer hair dreads, I think, longer hair dreads faster. Um, and... There's something that Dave Ramsey says. Um, he says if um, if you can't wait for it, maybe it's not worth having. And it has to do with finances, but I think it has a lot to do with like life decisions, um, and especially with dreadlocks. Um, if you can't wait for them, maybe you're not ready for them. Um, because if you do them on, a, in, on an impulse, um, you may not have them that long. Like you may, you probably be more likely to take them out, um, and that may work for you depending on the reasons that you're doing your dreadlocks. Mine is I want mine 
probably until the day I die. Like, I, I love them. Like, every single day, I am grateful that I have them. Um, but I also waited for them for six years. So I waited until I was out of high school. I waited until I was out of college. And I go, went ahead and did it. So the longer that I waited, the more I wanted them. And it's a lot like a tattoo. Like, the longer that you wait for your that tattoo that you want, um, and you realize that you still want it, it, it cements itself in your mind, and you and you know that you'll do it, um, versus just doing it on, on an impulse. So things to think about. Um, okay, so you talked about public life. We talked about personal life. Um, okay, so things that you should be thinking about for yourself. Um, think about your method. Um, choose the method that's best for you. And don't take anybody's word as like the golden rule. If you and if your best friend has dreadlocks and that method works great for them and your friend has told you all about that method and you are absolutely convinced that that method is for you, it might not be. And uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One, you have a but most likely have a completely different hair type than your friend. Um, and so your hair will dread and look completely different than your friend's um, dreadlocks. Uh, number two is your personality. Depending on your patience, depending on um, uh, how much work you're willing to put into them, will depend on the method that you choose. And uh, three is what you want out of your dreadlocks. Some people, dreadlocks are simply a hairstyle. It's a temporary thing that eventually they know they're going to take out. Um, some people, it's a lifestyle change. And so that will also tell you um, on what method you want to choose. Because um, some people will believe um, that how you treat your hair has a lot to do with your energy. And so the source of your dreadlocks um, will affect like them in the long run, some, something like that. Um, and so uh, choosing your method in that way, you'll also want to th think about. Um, anyway, so um, um, the other reason that you want to choose, uh, do your own research and find your method for you and not based on anyone else's opinions is because when people come up to you and ask you what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it, you know exactly what, what you're doing. I mean, you'll be able to explain yourself. So you'll be able to support yourself. Um, also, you'll be less likely to make mistakes. You'll be less likely to have to go through your third, fourth, fifth set of dreads. And there are people out there, like I read boards all the time where people are, people go on and on about how um, I'm on my third set of dreads, and they explain like why they took the others out. Some are for personal reasons, some are because they just chose the wrong method. So don't be one of those people. Don't have to redo your dreads because you made a mistake. Um, okay, um, and the methods that I can think of, they're synthetic dreads where, um, well, I guess there's, yeah, yeah. okay, so there's uh, a synthetic dreads where you can get like a dread perm. Um, I don't know much about those. Um, then there's, uh, you can get synthetic dreads where you actually put like hair extensions into your hair. So it, it, it's literally, it's not your hair. So it could either be fake hair or human hair or whatever. Um, and then the others are, uh, there's twist and rip, back combing, you can wax them, you can crochet hook them, um, you can do one thing which, uh, I would never suggest anyone to do. You can felt needle them. Yeah. Um, you can do the natural method. Ma natural method is also called the neglect method, also called the organic method. Um, and then the other method, uh, it's not like official, but I think it should be one because it's the one that I used and I think it has a completely different effect and I think it sh there should be a beading method because I, I did the beading method. Like you can see the beads, some of the beads, um, in my hair. And I just put a ton of beads in my hair, and that started my dre my like dreading process. So I kind of did like a mixture. I'm doing a mixture between like natural and beading. So, um, and each method has pros and cons. Do your research, figure out which ones, uh, which ones for you that the pros outweigh the cons. Um, okay, and finally. 
um, if you're dread if you're uh, deciding on dreadlocks and you want it to be a permanent thing for you, um, the final thing that you need to ask yourself is what scenarios will make you take them out. Think about the absolute worst case scenarios. Um, I've known people that have gone have decided to take them out because of weddings, um, because people um, in the wedding didn't want them to be in the wedding if they if that person had dreadlocks, which sucks. And another stereotype. Um, and uh, uh, my opinion for that is that if your friend really wants you to be in the wedding, they won't care what your hair looks like. Just saying. So um, anyway. Um, so what scenarios will make you take out your hair? Uh, a scenario for me is that if my boss looked at me and said, dude, your hair is getting out of control. And in order to look professional, you, you can't have dreadlocks anymore. I'd take them out in a second. I would, I would go into the bathroom right now and I would spend four hours and I would comb all of them out because I love my job. And, um, I know that I won't be working there for the rest of my life. It's not that kind of job that I would. Um, and so um, I know that I can start them again. I mean, it is hair. It grows back. Um, so, yeah, um, that's a scenario, scenario for me. Um, what are the worst case scenarios that will make you lose your dreadlocks? Um, or not lose, you can't just lose your dreadlocks. Like, whoop, lost them. Uh, um, but what's the worst case scenario that will make you take out your dreadlocks? Um, if you can think of those, and if you can think of the reasons why you wouldn't, then you'll be less likely to. So, um, I'm going to do, there's going to be a second part to this video, so you can go ahead and look in my, probably in, the, in my playlists and uploads, um, and I'm going to talk about, like, physical changes, like washing and like, drying and things like that. So, um, actual physical changes that some people don't consider um, that will change your everyday routine. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.